In this lesson, we will briefly look at the effects that prior fault has in relation to a defense as well as a crime itself. Crimes can be segregated into two specific sections, either as basic intent crimes or specific intent crimes. Basic intent crimes stipulate that you need not prove intention. Good examples of this is crimes that relate to negligence, recklessness and criminal damage. Specific intent, on the other hand, you must show an intention, for instance, murder. Now, in relation to prior fault itself, what we discuss in most syllabuses, in most LLB programs, is the effect of alcohol or intoxication in relation to crimes that have been committed by the defendant. Now, intoxication can be both self-induced as well as non-self-induced, and depending on what it is, the punishment and the availability of a defense of prior fault might be different. Firstly, in relation to self-induced intoxication, it can be a defense for specific intent crimes. For instance, we considered earlier that murder was a specific intent crime, one that requires both the actus reus and the mens rea elements to be fulfilled in order for a conviction to succeed. Now, in relation to intoxication, a person might be drunk and he kills a person. In that regard, the actus reus element is present. But court will not consider that he was in a mental capacity to develop the requisite mens rea of murder. Therefore, it can be. It doesn't mean that it always is successful, but it can be a defense for specific intent crime. However, you cannot consider self-induced intoxication as a defense for basic intent crime, much like recklessness, negligence, and criminal damage. Why? Because there is no need for a mens rea component. Only the actus reus is sufficient, so you cannot use it for basic intent. Now conversely, in relation to non-self-induced intoxication, where you were unaware that either your drink has been spiked or you have been provided with alcohol more than the required amount without your knowledge, it can be a defense for both specific intent and basic intent, and the reason for which is quite self-explanatory. Prior fall deals with the notion that you utilize it as a defense for actions which are committed without a requisite mens rea, and, and that's the key point here. When you consider prior fall as a defense, even in a question scenario, even in an examination situation, it must be considered in the context of a defense which negates mens rea. It does not negate the actus reus component unless, of course, there is a non-self-induced intoxication which has taken place. This was a quick overview or a quick summary of the effects of prior fault. It's something that you can consider when you're answering questions itself because more often than not, when a question arises in relation to murder or assault or some form of crime, there might be a very minute detail which is included in the examination question itself which stipulates or which points towards the effect of intoxication be it self-induced or non-self-induced and it's a good point to note and to keep in mind when you're answering questions. In the next lesson we will have a look at omissions which is the converse aspect of the act itself in relation to Arctus Reus. Hi, my name is Shavin Bandar Nayaka. Thanks a lot for watching this video on YouTube. For the complete course, make sure you click the link on the left. Also, for an exclusive discount to YouTube viewers, enter the coupon code YouTube at the course page. All the very best with your studies and good luck with your exams. See you in the next lesson.